Hello, everybody, and welcome to another fantastic episode of your favorite podcast, Double East Talk Tech. My name is Mike Hoffman. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, and I don't know if you know that it's a fantastic episode yet because we haven't recorded it yet. I just wanted to spice it up a little bit, you know? Okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, and we have Phil Greesock with us. Um, Phil's kind of our RF guy. So Mike and I know how to spell RF, but that's kind of where it stops. I'm stealing Phil's joke there. That's the you know, fake chuckle. So uh, Phil, tell us a little bit I about yourself. I think we're scaring him already. <laughs> yeah, we'll see Are if you okay? it to a second one. But, uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Who, I was like, yeah. I'm out. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Phil Grisak. Uh, I used to be an RF application engineer for Agilent and thus Keysight. And uh, moved into the scopes division uh, a little over a year ago. And now I'm really focused on aerospace defense, particularly radar. So um, just trying to impart some uh, wireless and aerospace defense wisdom. Can, on we, can we do a radar podcast instead of we, RF basics like we we're we going to do? We definitely can. I, well, we could start off with RF so, basics and yeah. then do a, okay. another one on That radar. sounds good. I've, always, I've been wanting to do a radar one go, for a while now. Game, so. Okay, cool. Teach us DC plebeians how <laughs> RF works. <laughs> okay, so... Basically, RF, you're working in the frequency domain instead of the time domain. Is that? I, generally, that's the conception. But in reality, uh, everything is time domain, you know, if you think about it in a logical fashion. Uh, but a lot of RF testing tools end up being more frequency domain oriented. Uh, for example, a spectrum analyzer, uh, you know, frequency versus amplitude instead of time versus amplitude like an okay. oscilloscope. So uh, common thought, but... You know, domain-wise, uh, both time and frequency applications, that makes you sense. really want to be concerned with both. Okay. Because I actually live in the time domain and not the frequency domain. Ah, yeah, that's a good neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what um, you know, this may be a more start basic, like what's going on? How are we communicating in the frequency domain? Sure. So l let's ground it in a particular application or use case, sure. right? It's a little bit easier. Uh, so... If we think about something that's familiar to most people, let's just talk about radio, right? Say yeah. AM radio. Um, so somewhere, uh, you know, in a state, in a county, in a region, there's some radio station with this giant antenna uh, that's going sky high, you know, a couple hundred feet typically. Mm -hmm. And um, some people think that whole thing is an antenna. Well, in reality, just uh, maybe a meter of the top of that structure is the actual antenna. Really? I did yeah. not know that. So, and running up to that is a super long cable from that antenna down to the radio station itself. And inside the radio station, they might have a setup something like this. So, obviously, we're transmitting our voices through the microphone, through that cable to the antenna. And there's a little bit of other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hardware and processing going on. But ultimately, at the output of the antenna is essentially microwaves. And based on a certain frequency that uh, you're transmitting over that is being broadcast omnidirectionally, so all in all directions, to various people or various things, whether it's a, a receiver in your car, uh, maybe a, a ham radio, or just, just any other receiver. Or, or, My you Walkman. Know, your, 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 <laughs> your Walkman, yeah, exactly. So um, ultimately what we're trying to do with RF is take advantage of uh, a lot of the spectrum to do different things. And one thing is like wireless transmission of voices or television for images. On that topic, one thing that always blew my mind uh, is go look up the FCC spectrum allocation table. That's pretty cool. It yeah. is unreal how, how subsectored it is between mostly military applications and things like that. And then it's just these couple little slices that you can use for your drones and, you know, phones and stuff like that. But yeah. No, and it's crazy on how many different applications there are. So obviously there are certain things that we want to communicate with that doesn't make sense to run a cable to. So sure. how do we do that? We transmit like a car, wirelessly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like a car. Um, so there's a lot of different frequencies that we can use, and there's pros and cons to different frequencies that we transmit on. And within that, there's the data that we transmit on that frequency. So for like an AM radio station, we change the amplitude of uh, the information we want to send. Uh, that's called amplitude mod. So you're tuning into like when you tune your, you know, car radio into a certain radio station, that's a specific like carrier frequency that it's going over? Exactly. So, so you, so you eight, get up in yeah. the morning, you're coming into the work, and you're listening to, I don't know, 95.5. And, and people always associate, oh, that's the radio station. But actually, that's 95.5 megahertz, 
right. for FM. So that is the center frequency of which that radio station is transmitting and of which you're tuning your car's radio to receive. Okay. So you're basically taking your antenna and tuning it to only receive that specific slice of the frequency. Well, exactly. it's, it's, more, it's more of like a down converter, right? Where it brings 95.5 megahertz back down to essentially zero. And then that information is kind of butterflied around it, right? Exactly. And filter yep. it out. No, that, that's a good point. That, that's the next part is you don't necessarily always do everything at that higher frequency. You just take advantage of RF or the wireless frequency for the transmission part. But in terms of turning it back into audio, for our example that we're using here, is that, like you said, you down convert it to a more appropriate frequency or to zero hertz or DC, you know, for mm -hmm. the time domain fleetings, sure. as you said. <laughs> um, and then you process it and you can convert it back into audio. So it's really a method just to take advantage of uh, a different domain so that if you want to transmit something wirelessly or have more than one thing happening at the same time, but segmented in different frequencies sure you can do that as well so theoretically like if you sent a one kilohertz tone on an fm station that's actually a fixed frequency that you're sending so you're saying like 95.5010 or whatever exactly. i'm sure it's yeah, not yeah. i'm sure there's some log scale and how that how it happens i don't <laughs> I have a blog article on it actually the yeah. basics of am and fm it's okay. pretty cool it's well, it's, it's beautiful it's for am true. at least the math is beautiful because you basically just take the audio you want and if you look at it in the spectrum, in the frequency domain, it has you know zero to twenty kilohertz, what have you. You just multiply it by the carrier, and boom, it's there. And then when you receive it, you just multiply it by the carrier again, and boom, it comes back with a bunch of weird, you know, different artifacts. transients and artifacts that you filter out. That's why no one ever listens to AM radio. <laughs> <laughs> right. Good for sports games. The local yeah. sporting <laughs> events. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, so, uh, you know, wireless is just one application of RF. Um, you know, like we were talking at the beginning and some of the things I'm focused on, uh, people use RF-type uh, technology for things like radars, whether it's from automotive radars for automatic cruise control or you know, collision detection, or it could be uh, weather radars as well as airport traffic control radars. So uh, there's a lot of different applications, whether, you know, from communication to commercial to aerospace defense that RF really plays into. But ultimately, it ends up not only just being frequency domain, but also time domain, because both those things are going to interact depending on what you're trying to achieve. That makes sense. Yeah. So... What, are there any like major down? So people who are coming from you know maybe digital design systems and trying to branch into RF, are there any? Is there any like advice or common pitfalls and traps that people fall into? <laughs> or like obviously don't hook up a DC voltage to your spectrum analyzer. Yeah, right? yeah. Don't don't put a power supply directly into your spec in and try to measure voltage. It's not going to do anything good for you. <laughs> okay. Um, I think a lot of it is just a little bit of nomenclature. Um, aside from that, a lot of the principles, if not all the principles, are fundamentally the same. So, uh, you know, from, a, say, oscilloscope background, someone might say, oh, what's the bandwidth of that oscilloscope? Well, when you say bandwidth in an RF sense, you're talking about a specific bandwidth of a signal. Sure. And then if I want to know where that falls, I'm at talking about frequency range. So in, for an oscilloscope, we always assume if you say bandwidth, you're going to start at DC, zero hertz, and go up to, so if you say it's a gigahertz bandwidth, Start at DC up to one gigahertz of signal, but for RF, it's it's one gigahertz around a center frequency. Right. So exactly. you can have a you know, a, you know twenty five gigahertz center frequency, and then you can see twenty four point five gigahertz to twenty five point five gigahertz. Analysis bandwidth is that what it's called? Yeah. So uh, on an instrumentation set, uh, analysis bandwidth is the the information that's centered around a particular center frequency. And then, so a, a channel then is like a specific frequency or a specific frequency range. So we think of FM channels, but we also talk about like yeah. other types, of, you know. It, no, 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 great, great, great example. Because if you look at cellular mm -hmm. as well as the, the FCC allocation chart, yeah. a lot of it will have, uh, you know, cellular PCS channels, for example, for cell phones. Uh, so Sprint oh, yeah, yeah. runs on PCS technology and they have different channels. And that, say, starts at X frequency and stops at Y frequency. Whereas, and then, like, a different vendor will have an adjacent channel to it? and yeah, Different vendors could have adjacent channels or channels in a different band and things like that. So uh, channel and RF domain more so talks about uh, different sets of frequencies to operate in, whereas okay. channel and time domain, or at least time domain instrumentation, might be a physical 
input like on an right. oscilloscope. So th- this gets back to that whole nomenclature uh, difference that if you get over some of these little things, if you're unfamiliar, um, you really start to understand that, okay, I, I have information somewhere that I'm trying to analyze or trying to work with, and okay. you end up doing the same thing. And then, so kind of the basic block outline of an RF system, as I understand it, is you have your source data or whatever it is. So usually it's coming out of some sort of like FPGA or sensor or something, and it gets upconverted with a mixer yep. into a carrier frequency. So you input a carrier frequency, yep. or do you... So, so that mixer usually has two inputs. One is the information that you want to transmit, and then the second is an LO or a local oscillator. Okay. And so mixer, simple mixer math is IF plus or minus LO is equal to RF. So to, there's more behind mixers, and we can do multiple podcasts okay. on that if you really I'm want sure. to get into nitty-gritty. But basically, if your your signal of interest or your voice, say, is 1 kilohertz, and your LO is 1 megahertz, then you're going to output 1.001 megahertz. Sure. Plus yeah. or okay. minus, right? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then that goes to an antenna of some type. If you're going wireless, you can go to an antenna. Wireless, okay. It could still be sent over a, a cable or so you know, so any what, kind what of So what would an example of that be? So I guess, yeah, what, what, when is cabled RF, where, where does that show up yeah. in the well, real world? Well, it's way to the antenna, I presume? Or? Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, to, to but, the but antenna. But that's you know, still just wireless <laughs> RF, right? Like, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> there, there's situations where you want to send narrow bands of information over a single cable. So if we think about uh, optical, 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 yeah, we think about a cable TV, for example. Um, yeah. Essentially, when you change mm-hmm. channels, you're essentially changing different frequencies. On so cable, cable TV is an RF signal, and you're just oh yeah, that yeah. makes obvious sense now that I say that out loud. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I could have told you that before. I always thought the cable company just wired like 700 different pieces of cable into my cable box. <laughs> <laughs> And, and there's some guy are. out there changing from uh, you know cable to cable when you ask to <laughs> change channel. So okay, that's, uh, that answers my question thoroughly. So and then it goes to you know a cable or something, and then it comes back to a down converter, which is like one over a mixer. Well, it, it, it's just another mixer. <laughs> okay, you know, so it's another mixer, usually with the same local oscillator frequency and a very simple system uh, design. Uh, you can choose different frequencies depending on what your digitizer is on the back end to convert that. that okay, one so it goes through your up. like down converting mixer yep. into a digitizer, an ADC yep. of some sort, and that ADC feeds into your processing stuff. Exactly, and okay. then you get voice back or your image back or whatever data that you transmitted originally. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. The interesting thing, uh, a little bit of history, is that when uh, RF or wireless was first being figured out. Um, I, I forget the exact who who proposed this, but fundamentally, someone said, "Well, instead of transmitting the actual data, or you know, a sine wave of my voice, for example, or something like that, let's just transmit the frequency, the number. So if I know it's one kilohertz, let hmm. me just transmit and say it's one kilohertz." And people thought that was a great idea because it greatly simplified the system. You didn't have to worry about noise and all these different effects. But the problem is, real world signals. Are, yeah. aren't just a single tone, aren't just single frequency, much more complex. So, right. Um, that Until we all become robots and that. start talking in one. Yeah. <laughs> Ones and zeros, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, I think one of my favorite RF stories is like, uh, so we all know Tesla, and I don't, I'm, I'm sure this is canon and someone's going to get mad at me for mistelling a Tesla story, but <laughs> you'll be okay. Um, is he went to a pond, and he actually was in, Colorado, lived in Colorado Springs, had a lab here. Um Anyways, What's that one movie that uh, that was here in town that he was the prestige? Uh, for the prestige? prestige. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> Tesla created a teleportation device for a ma- magician, basically. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Ish. It's a it, it's a it's a good movie. We'll we, you don't want to give it away. You should just go watch it. Yeah. Anyway, um, if you're gonna keep going, Tesla, he he went to a local you know like pond or something where people walked at the park, and he had a boat with a remote controlled rudder on it. So he basically came up with the idea of like hey i can control the rudder with it but what he did is he went put it in the water and then was yelling directions at the boat and had the control in his pocket and got the crowd like every you know obviously got people's attention because the guy's controlling the boat with his voice and he had people in the in the crowd at the park like yelling at the boat to try and get it to do what they want and he would just kind of control it from his (laughs) (laughs) 
And I, I think that's Ultimate a pretty troll. I like it. <laughs> that's a pretty basic RF system. Like it's either right or it's left. Yeah. And it, you know, you just send one tone or another and it figures out the difference between the two, I'd assume with some sort of comparator and, you know, triggers an actuator and turns it, turns better. Yeah. Yeah. RF. Cool stuff. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you work mostly in aerospace defense applications. Is that kind of where you specialize? Yeah, before I focused on kind of the wireless and commercial communications, but a lot more now on uh, radar systems. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I, which which is you know wh- who's the dog and who's the tail as far as wireless technology is concerned? Are we seeing a lot of things developed in the military arena and then coming to consumer electronics, or vice versa? Because I feel like the demand for consumer wireless electronics is exploding. There has to be a ton of cool innovations in the private sector too. Oh, certainly. Uh, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, the government sector is necessarily the tail or the dog or, you know, com- compared to commercial <laughs> wireless and vice versa. Uh, probably a classic example is GPS. You know, that was something that yeah. was, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, yeah. um, developed by DARPA, or if not, you know, the U.S. government for uh, obvious military reasons, you know, you got to know where you're at on a battlefield as well as different types of uh, guidance systems and such. And then eventually that trickled back into more commercial systems and everyone had, you know, like a, a TomTom or a Garmin type, uh, you know, dashboard GPS mm-hmm. before. The little handheld, uh, I always wanted one of those little handheld GPSs and I'm so glad oh, that I never got they one. They were terrible. <laughs> they were terrible. Uh, c- compared to, you know, modern day smartphones, which, you know, between yeah. different map applications, things like that. So uh, that's a situation where, you know, commercial was definitely on the back end that was uh, technology trickle too, but... In the same sense, uh, if you look at different wireless technologies and RF technologies and applications in the commercial space, like Internet of Things, uh, let, let's basically put a Bluetooth transmitter on you know every you know gas meter, water meter outside a house, things like that. You know that could have some application in the aerospace defense world, mm-hmm. but uh, nothing as direct. So sometimes they do flow back and forth, but it really depends on hmm. what the driving need is more than anything else. Interesting. Okay. So how um, how easy is RF stuff to mess with? So like I'm sending a 2.4 gigahertz, you know, we have a Wi-Fi signal in this building and I wanted to say, you know, let's jam it or whatever. How do you go yeah. about <laughs> do, we, do you just like broadcast on the same frequency and well confuse it, everything or what does there's, that look like? there's what you can do and what what you're what you should or should I'm not do. asking for schematics or anything yeah. like well well the long and short the FCC is really going to come depends. knocking on your door just to let you know, <laughs> know. <laughs> it, it we're really on so depends. many lists because of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> it really depends on what frequencies like for the ISM band it's an unlicensed band, so basically anyone can do anything. What is ISM? Um, industrial, scientific, and medicine, or medical M- Medical, bands. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's like the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band, that okay. Wi-Fi. And the 980 or what is it? I, I forget that uh, that lower part, but yeah. Okay. But largely wireless LAN, Bluetooth fall in that arena. And um, if you look on a lot of those devices, especially consumer devices, it says something to the effect of a FCC tag um, saying this device must comply with all regulation and be mm-hmm. suspect to um, any other signals, basically. Sure, like I that. wonder. So like if uh, older cordless telephones, you know, the 800 megahertz, 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz ones that everyone mm-hmm. thought was really cool because you walk around the house, um, you know, someone turn on the microwave and then, you know, your call could drop or things like that. <laughs> it's a perfect example of I have this intentional use case talking over the phone and then someone's firing up Totino pizza rolls or something. And <laughs> guess what? Your call is, you know, no longer, you know, this girl sure. you're trying to talk to is <laughs> no more. I can always Sorry, tell when my story. Phil, Phil sounds a little bitter <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can always tell when my roommate was it. like, de- uh, you know, uh, thawing something in the microwave because my Netflix would cut out. Ah, uh, yep, exactly. <laughs> like, That's why five gig wireless is all the way, all the rage. You know. Well, was it was it a previous podcast? We're talking about that new router technology that hops into military bands dynamically. I don't think so. That's not ringing a bell. Okay, maybe that was just a conversation I was having with a friend. There's a new Wi-Fi router you can buy that uh, I guess there's some bands that are real close to being the Wi-Fi band, you know, 5 gigahertz-ish, but they're for uh, government use. But you're allowed to use them as long as they're not being used by any oh. sort of local entities. Mm-hmm. And so it's this router. It like pops you over to this special channel that basically no one else ever uses. And if they're, if it's ever actively being used, it switches off. Huh. Anyway, but that was kind of yeah. cool. That was very cool. But I mean, you could take that concept to the next degree, where um, 
you know, if you're a fighter jet flying over, you know, any particular piece of land in the world, for example. <laughs> Some come to mind at, at this <laughs> specific point in history, but... Um, you know, you want to know if, uh, you know, someone's painting you with a target or uh, with a radar. Yeah. And uh, if that's happening, you know, maybe you intentionally want to jam that radar. And there's different techniques to do that, whether you're just going to broadcast a bunch of noise to drown out that radar signal to noise ratio. Or if you do something more deceptive, like uh, change the actual return signal to make it think you're somewhere where you're not. Oh, so okay. it goes from everything from, you know, microwaves screwing up Netflix and, uh, you know, phone calls to girls to, um, you know, trying to make sure or, or, the or not shooting you down. So, uh, you know, just saying. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I always wondered how that worked. How, how can you know that you are being painted, can we, can, as you said? Uh, but we're actually like... Over 20 minutes now, so I, I okay. really want to talk about radar. Can we just like do another episode on radar? Yeah, sure, Maybe. certainly. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's and lasers. Yeah. I, I didn't realize you were the radar, radar guy. Otherwise, I just we just would have opened with that. So, anyway, uh, as part of our podcast, we like to ask our guests a stupid question. Okay. Um. <laughs> so I don't know if Mike has one. Other than R and F, what are your favorite letters? That's my my question. Other than. R and F, whatever. The, well, you can't have R F because you know. Well, uh, I, I would say the C is my first love. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you're pirate. Yeah, yeah. She's a pirate. Joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, the pirate joke, right? Like, what's a pirate's favorite letter? And everyone goes R. It's like, oh, you might think that, but he's dedicated to the C. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know that joke already. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, I got a good one. What's your favorite allocation? What's your favorite frequency allocation from the FCC and why? Ooh. This is so a good many one. options. Do not get this question wrong. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, about 950 megahertz. Why? There's a lot of good local sports broadcasts, plus you got some cellular technology. It, it, it's just, it, it's used and it's always there. It, it's happening. It has a purpose. It's, never it's like the vanilla up. ice cream of RF yeah. frequencies. Yeah, everyone <laughs> overlooks it, but you know, from time to time, you go back to it and you're like, "This is good." All this right, good. I'm glad I'm here. It's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, if you want to learn more about RF stuff, I'd probably just point people to App Note 150, which is kind of the legendary book of an App Note. Um, we're also going to have an RF channel, a Keysight RF channel, coming up at some point. It might even be live now, depending on when this podcast <laughs> goes live. We'll see. Um, so just you know, Google. I'm sure there'll be a link for it somewhere by the time that that channel goes live. So check it out. Uh, that's all. Make sure you subscribe to Double East Talk Tech on your favorite podcast engine and the Keyset Oscilloscopes YouTube channel. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff, Mike Hoffman. Sorry, I'm going to steal your thunder. And Phil Greasock. Thanks, Phil. Tune, Thank tune in next time. We're going to talk about radar. I'm pretty excited.